evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host inviting you through the squeaking door to give you a peek at the latest style in murder and mayhem. Yes, friends. The styles and crime change like anything else. You know, there's a new look to the corpses these days. Blood is running longer for the ladies. <laughs> Stranglers report that the new long hairdo is ideal for uh, garroting girls with their own dresses. Only one girl ghost I know have complained about the long dresses. She says that she's been wearing long sheets for years, and now no one can tell her from a human that she can't haunt people anymore. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, The Doomed, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Carl Swanson, a role of Garth, with Mercedes McCambridge as Claudia. All right, Francis. You know what's going to happen now, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's right. You're going to scream your little head off and laugh. Ready? Then gather close to the fire and listen to Garth Walden tell us the same story. I'm not sure if I icy sweat my whole being. Oh, presence is death. And I rush to the window just to escape and opened it wide. I live the breath of the cool night air on my face. My eyes cleared and I looked at Nina's bed. And I knew that she wasn't sleeping. I called her. Nina! Nina, wake up! didn't care. Nina! I was terrified. I knew this was quite a sound, this was awful. And I shook her. Nina! Nina, talk to me. It's me, God! Nina! I knew my thought. The bruise was on her neck. I knew I'd murdered her. Frantically, dialed her number. I go in there. Her eyes were closed. She was still, so still, so deathly still. Lyman. Yes, this is Lyman Simmons. Who's calling? I'm, I'm sorry to, to uh, wake you at an hour like this. Who is this? Uh, Garth Walden. Oh, what do you want, Garth? I'm in a, 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 a terrible jam. I, well, what's the matter? I murdered my wife. What? When? Just, no? Just you. I don't know what to do. I need help desperately. She's lying there on, on the bed. Now get a grip on yourself. Uh, exactly as I tell you. Yes. Get a suitcase. Pack some clothes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. When you leave, lock the door. Make sure of that. Yes, I will. Then come directly to my place. Don't take a cab. Walk. It's only a short distance. Yes, I understand. Don't let anyone see your face if you pass them on the street. Make sure no one sees you come into my house. Yes, I'll be careful. Remember everything I told you. I, I appreciate what you're doing, Lyman. Goodbye. while I draw the blind. Now, this is the ground floor apartment. Lyman. Just a moment, Garth. Did you get the bureau? Yes, yes. I, I took the jewelry box. Put it on the desk. Yes. Now, what happened? Well, you, you know that I've been ill. Yes. Well, Nina wanted me to go to her sanitarium. I guess that's why I hated her. I guess that's why I killed her. She wanted me locked away so that she could get up my money. She never loved me, and I'm not sorry that I killed her. Uh, I shut up. I'm on my head. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I killed her. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, God. You're, you're losing your head. All right. I'll, I'll behave. But look, I mean, you've got to help me. I can't take care of this myself. Somebody's got to help me. You're not making it easy for anyone to help you. Go on. What happened? Well... Nina had me examined by a group of specialists to find out if I was insane. Well, and they said that I wasn't. Just a case of my, my nerves being shot. How did you murder her? I don't know. No. No. See, that's, that's one of the things that's wrong with me. I, I, I can't remember certain things. You don't remember killing her. No. But I, I must have murdered her. What makes you so sure? Well, because I, I was locked in the room with her. And I must have done it while I slept. Well, you slept. Well, they told me that I once tried to choke her 
while I was sleepwalking. I don't remember. I see. And when I woke tonight, I was having a kind of a nightmare. She was on the bed. Dead, and, and there were bruises on her throat. I know that I love her. Go on, Doc. Well, I, then I, I phoned you. You you were my oldest and closest friend. You're, you're the only one I could think of to turn to. You're a lawyer, and you, you know what to do. See, see, you do know what to do, don't you, Lyman? You are going to help me. You're not going to let them put me to death for this, are you? Doc, yeah. two weeks ago, you approached me about getting a divorce. Yes, that's right. You mentioned something about another woman. Yes, Claudia Weston. I want to marry her. Why? Can the police find out about that? Yeah. So there are, are letters. Mm-hmm. Very important. Very. It gives you a motive for murder. When did the group of doctors examine you? Two days ago. Why? Why? A plea of insanity is about the only thing that can save you. And now with their findings that you're saying, that's out. Well, what am I going to do? Doc, aiding and abetting a criminal is a serious offense. I can go to prison for helping you. Are you backing out? I don't know. No, you can't. You're my friend. You realize you're asking me to commit a crime. For heaven's sake, Norman, what are you trying to do? Drive me out of my mind? I've gone through enough. Seeing her there on the bed like that, and now you're going to let them take me? No, no, God. Here, I, I've got them for you. Here, take this. Here, the gun. It's loaded. The serial number has been filed off. I took this away from a rather stupid client of mine. Well, what? What's the idea? You're a fugitive now. You might need it. Did you lock up the apartment as I told you to? Yes. The banks will be open in four hours. I want you to go to your bank and draw out all your ready cash and bring it here. Why? I'll need it to help you get out of the country. Is that what I've got to do? That's exactly what you've got to do. Now, when you leave here, check in at some hotel. Turn the collar up, don't you? Don't let anyone get a good look at your face. I understand. You won't be in any danger until after they've discovered me and body. Will anyone call at the apartment this morning? No, there won't be anyone there all day. I don't think. I mean, if you charge the maid, yes, that's all to your advantage. As soon as you've got the money out of the bank, come here. Oh. Why not be seen? It won't be so easy at that hour, but you'll have to risk it. Now, I mean, I appreciate you. Don't imagine I'm unaware of the risk that you're taking. You, you saved my life for me. But I would have done it even if I didn't owe you that favor. All right. You better move now. There wasn't a soul in the ball of the street I saw it in there. So far, I was in my life. And then I heard it. A siren. I glanced over my shoulder with the police power car speeding down the block and was coming from the street where I lived. They discovered the body. They were already looking for me. I ran. I ran as fast as I could, and the power car was speeding up the street. Right and back in the house, a few more steps to the subway entrance, and I ran down the steps, and I had a nickel ready, and I dashed through the fence. My luck still held because there was a waiting train, and the doors closed just as the car and the train pulled out of the platform. Here, yes, that's right, Claudia. I started a play to go to a hotel. The police might be looking there already. They could get me when I tried to register. This is a hotel. I know, I know, Claudia. But I, I knew I could come right up to your room without going to the registration. Oh, God. I know, I know I couldn't have done it. You know what it's like. Hey, the night be behind you any minute. You were so miserable, I had to see you, Claudia. I, I, I think so, Miss Morgan. There are three. I found them. You'll be all right. Thank you, Claudia. No one will find you, please. Oh, I'm too tired. Terribly tired. I'm very tired. Doris? Hmm? Have you told me everything? Just as it happened? Mm-hmm. Doris, there's no reason to suppose the police will ask but I saw the car. But in the state you're in, you could imagine anything. <coughs> Hello, operator. Would you get me village 69970, please? And call me back when you complete the call. That's my home. What are you doing for If me? the police are there, they'll answer. 
Another thing, Doc. I think you made a mistake about Lyman. Mistake? Yes. Well, you don't know Lyman. He'd do anything for me. He's taking a, a big risk trying to help. Maybe he's trying to get your money. How can you say that? Stop, darling, don't you see? <laughs> he wants you to bring him everything you have. Well, what's to prevent him from keeping it? You'll never be able to do anything to him without risking capture. Claudia, <laughs> If I can't believe in, in Lyman, I just... to me. I know a way you can test him. But... Just a minute. Yes. Oh, thank you. There was no answer to your place, Tom. Then the police don't know. No, but Lyman does. Scott, you've got to find out about him. How about that? Look. I risked going to the bank and drew out all my cash. I was still safe. And I went to Lyman's house. He quickly let me in. Did you get the money? Yes. It's in the suitcase. Give it to me. Hurry. How much is it? Ten thousand dollars. I've already seen a man about the jewels. He gave me eight thousand for them. Now, uh, did you find a place to stay? Yes. The Hotel Gainesby. Room 690. All right. Wait there until you hear from me. Uh, if anyone tries to force their way in, you better use the gun I gave you. The gun? I haven't got a chance otherwise. you shoot your way out or be killed. Lyman, you, you better leave now. Yeah. Here's some of this money. What are you going to do with the rest of it? Save your skin, Doc. Goodbye. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, I couldn't believe what Claudia had told me, yet there was something in his manner that made me follow her advice. And leaving... I slipped the lock on the door, so it was easy for me to see Cassidy with the pocket. I quietly opened and closed the door. I heard Lyman on the telephone. He was at his desk, talking very intensely. Yes, it's funny. He didn't see me come up behind him. All right, I'll wait. What he said made me draw the gun out of my pocket. Yes? Yes, Inspector. Yes, Garth Walden phoned me. Only a few minutes ago. No, he told me he had murdered his wife. I believe it. The man's a homicidal maniac and he's armed with a gun. That's right. I pretended I was going to help him. He told me where he's hiding. It's room 690 at the Hotel Gainesby. Yes. Tell your men to be careful because he's desperate and will put up a fight. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, Lyman. Stop! I heard every word. Did you? So you're my friend. Yes, you're, you're misunderstanding, Doc. This is, is part of a plan to help you. There's the same penalty for two murders as there is for one. Isn't that true, Lyman? Doc, put that gun down, please. My friend. Doc, you can't. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I quickly gathered the money together, put it back in the suitcase, and ran to the door. And in the darkened hallway, I suddenly stood stock still when I heard. That was the voice of my wife. I turned, I saw her face. And with a shriek of terror, I ran into the street. I knew what had happened. It was an hallucination. My mind was trembling under the violent pressure of terror, bitterness, murder. Garth Walden has just told us about two murders and his insanity. You know, that's the trouble with committing murder. It leads to lunacy, and lunacy leads to psychiatrists, and psychiatrists are so expensive. <laughs> well, let's hear Garth finish the story in his own words. A cab was waiting outside the house, and I jumped into it. I had the driver take me to Claudia's hotel. I went for a room. Told her everything that had happened. So you murdered him? Yes. You were right about him. Doc, you shouldn't have come directly to the hotel. I don't care anymore. So you didn't tell Lyman that you were with me? No, no. I lied to him. I said I was at the hotel game. It's just it, 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 hallucination. Oh, no. I, I, I've never had that before. I'm not losing my mind. Doc, you mustn't think about it. Yes. You've got to calm down. Right. No. Here, I've got something for you. 
What is it? Take it, Gordon. Oh. What is it? It will make you sleep. Take it. possibly make now. Scott, what did you do with that money? I mailed it to the downtown post office general delivery under the name of Carol Crane. So that's why you're so helpless. To get my money. No, no. It was just a plan to help you. The gun next to my head. That was a plan to help me too, I Scott! Thought. You'd go to jail for me, wouldn't you? You'd die for me, wouldn't you? You're worse than Lyman. Look down that gun. It was for you that I was going to divorce Nina. Scott! <laughs> You. Good God. The lovely mask lay there on the floor with a queer, twisted smile. Uh, the door. Wait. I ran to the window. I hung it up. There was a parent on the floor below, and I jumped. I stared at the room. I raced through there to the corridor, down endless stairs to the lobby. Just about to go into the street when I heard a voice call. I spun around. Nina, my wife, I saw her face again and I reached into the street. When I took calm down enough, I remembered a sort of little rooming house downtown. Nina and I had lived after we were married and had the town of the penny. I was lucky enough to get a room. Then that night I heard a knock on the door. Who is it? Nina. Hello, Doc. Nina. Nina. No, Mr. Dando. Oh, you're, you're dead. No. No. Doc, with me. I know what happened. I, I didn't kill you. No, Doc. You were dead. I saw you. I was close to death. You saved my life. Huh? Remember when you were cold and the fire came to the bedroom and you didn't open any window? I was unhelpless and cold. Hungry. 
You may have to wake up, I guess. Open the window. That's the thing. But the bruises on your neck. Don't you remember? What? Earlier that night, you got up to your feet. You had one of those fits of violence. Oh. oh. Good. Oh, Nina, do you know what I've done? Yes, darling, I know what you've done. I tried to find you. I went to Lyme, and I, I even went to Claudia. Why'd you come here? To help you. Help me? You, you're not yourself, God. You haven't been for some time. I know you need help more than you've ever needed. Oh, Nina. I thought of this case. I didn't expect to find you. Darling, I have a little money. I borrowed it from my mother. Perhaps you can go from oh, here. Nina. Just let me go. Where is it? Please, Walton. Better come out quietly. We know you're in there. Oh, sorry, Walton. You haven't a chance. Oh, you betrayed me, too. Oh, no, God, I didn't. Listen, I'll help you now. Oh, I haven't got a chance. I'll go to the chair for those two murders. You have a gun. I've got the car outside. Now hold me and tell it. You use me as a shield. They won't dare fire and hit me. At least you'll have a fighting chance. Tina, you'll do this. Yes. Open the door. Come on, Walton. Open You ready, God? All right. I'll try it. I'll open the door. Now stand him back again. Ah, oh, you're just... Hey, what's the idea? Don't shoot, officer. I've got a gun. If you shoot, you'll hit her. Get out of the way now. We're coming through. You fool. You can't get away with we'll this. see you about... Home! Hold it! Guards, don't mind me. Run for it! Oh, Nina. Mine's healing now. Nina's well enough to visit me here in the hospital. In two days, I'll have to appear in court to answer a charge of murder. The two people I killed were two people I loved and trusted. And they both betrayed me when they thought I was a murderer. The only person who loved me enough to risk their life for me was my wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, friends, isn't that just like a wife? Hmm. To come out of the grave and be sweet to you just before you go to the electric chair. <laughs> Poor God. Well, he would have known better if he'd only read the inscription on the tomb of Slice Him Alive, the Arabian Bluebeard, which says, Never murder a wife who won't stay dead. <laughs> and here's a little thought to take to sleep with you. Never commit a murder to become wealthy, because being rich is so expensive. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.